السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم على نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم As for his legacy Then all of this what we're talking about This is the legacy he left behind And as for his death then I have to excuse myself I cannot speak about the death of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم but I'll speak about some of the legacy or a part of the legacy he left, which I feel is something which the Prophet ﷺ emphasized a lot through his direction and his practical application, which is missing today, especially, sadly, missing from the lives of those who claim that they follow the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet, as for his great character, we cannot speak about all of it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ You, Muhammad, are upon a khuluq, a character which is great. It is not just good. It is good, better than good. It is great, عظيم. And from his great character, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is that he used to practice exactly how what the Quran directed of the persona of a Muslim, the personality of a Muslim, how the Muslim is supposed to be. That's how he is, yeah. How you and I are supposed to be. This is something very important, and it's something which I mentioned also in my first lecture, which has to be emphasized, yeah. These things have to be practical. They have to be practical. Otherwise, Wallahi, it is proofs against us in front of Allah. It is proofs against us. Abu Darda radiallahu anhu used to say, ala nafsi. The thing which I fear most for myself. Ida sa'alani rabbi, ya uwaymir, alimt, fabima amilt. He says, the thing I fear most is when my Lord will ask me, O oh, Uwaymir, you knew, but how did you act on that which you knew? So I want to focus on this thing. And this is the part of the great character of the Prophet wasallam, And this is the tawadu, the humbleness and the modesty of the Prophet wasallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says about his Prophet, وَخْفِضْ جَنَاحَكَ لِمَنِ اتَّبَعَكَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And lower your wing, humble yourself to those who have followed you of the believers. Allah is directing His Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. وَخْفِضْ جَنَاحَكَ لِمَنِ اتَّبَعَكَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He also informed us about His Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم why He has the greatest character. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ It is through Allah's mercy that you are lenient with them. وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضْوًا غَلِيظُ الْقَلْبِ لَمْ فَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ But if you are tough, if you are tough, unaccommodating, tough-hearted, not merciful, they would all run away from you. You won't have any followers, any companions, nothing. Allah says, so forgive them. Because they will wrong you. There's no friend, there's no husband, there's no wife, there's no child, there's no parent except that he'll, he or she will wrong you. So Allah directs us, He says, forgive them. And then what? فَعَفُ عَنْهُمْ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ In fact, top of that, on top of that, after you forgive them, ask Allah to forgive them, make istighfar for them, make dua for them. 
And on top of that, washawirhum fil amr. Consult them in the matters of yours. He is Allah's chosen prophet, the greatest human being alive. Wahi comes down to him. Yet Allah directs him to do these things. Consult them. That is from the humbleness he used to have. And when you have decided a matter, إِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ Depend on Allah and do what you want. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he explains to us from the great wisdoms which the parents should start teaching the children since they are young. Allah tells us about the great parent, Luqman alayhi salam. Luqman, when he was giving advice to his child, Ya Bunayya, he also said to him what? وَلَا تُسَعِرْ خَدَّكَ لِلنَّاسِ do not raise up your chin to the people. You know, someone who is kibr, he is arrogant, the opposite of humbleness. He always walks with his head up high, looking down on people. And do not walk on the earth boastfully arrogant. Humble yourself. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said once, Ala inna rabbakum qad awha ilayya an wa'allimakum mimma jahiltum. He said, Surely your Lord has revealed to me that I should teach you of the things which you have been ignorant of. And from what he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said what? You should know what? Wa annahu man tawabda'a lillah Rafa'ahullah, or, or he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that is another hadith. He said, What? Wa an tawadu'u, you should have tawadu'u, humbleness. La yafhar ahadukum ala ahad. None of you should boast and look down on his fellow Muslim. Hatta la yabghi ahadun ala ahad, it's such that no one can transgress over another. One of the great diseases the Ummah is suffering of today, one of the great diseases of the heart which affects most of us, is the kibr, looking down on others and not treating it with tawadu, or humbleness. Treating it with humbleness. At tawadu. What is tawadu? Maybe someone may ask, what is this humbleness we're talking about? Humbleness is of two types. At-tawadu' lil-haq wa at-tawadu' lil-khalq At-tawadu' lil-haq ay lillah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa al-haq al-lazhi arsalahu Allah Having humbleness to the truth and having humbleness to the creatures Humbleness to the truth that is Allah fa innahu huwa al-haq Allah is the truth and the truth he sent the Muslim he should humble himself towards the truth. That is the book of Allah and the authentic sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu with the ijma' of the sahaba. Whatever comes to you from the book of Allah, then you have to humble yourself. You have to humble yourself and say what? This is what I have to follow. Even if my mind does not comprehend it. Even if I don't know about it. This is the truth. This is what the book of Allah says. Okay, this is what? I am going to lower myself towards this. When an authentic hadith of the Prophet ﷺ is brought to you, and this is the understanding of the Sahaba, those who we call the Salaf, this is what they, they understood and they practiced, then you humble yourself and you say, this is the truth. That is number one. Humbleness towards the truth. And the opposite of it is the Kibr, and that is what destroyed Iblis first, Shaitan, and destroyed every other tyrant who came after who rejected the truth. And number two, at tawadu lil khalq, being humble towards fellow human beings, such that no one should feel he is better than another such that it should not lead to one transgressing over the other. And that means in every aspect of it, whether it is on racial lines, whether it is on age, whether it is based on 
the color of your skin, whether it is based on wealth, no one should look down on another. That is the definition of kibr, the, the great disease of the heart, kibr, arrogance. Al kibr, batar al haq wa ghamtu al nas. It is to reject the truth and to look down on people. And tawadu' is the opposite of that. It is for you to submit yourself to the truth and to humble yourself towards others. How do you humble yourself towards others? The scholars, they said, That you should not see that you have a higher level or a higher status than anyone. That is tawadu. And others, they said, and more than that, is actually you should see whenever you meet someone, another person, you should say, a Muslim, you should say, he is better than me. He is better than me. Chances are he is better than me in front of Allah. That is tawadu. Tawadu is not to humiliate yourself. No. It is not to humiliate yourself. Unlike this is what the Sufis, they believe in. If you, maybe you heard the stories or I won't say go read the books of the Sufis. Don't do that. But they took tawadu to mean that. So you'd see one of them, uh, he wears the most rough, dirty clothes every day and he thinks this is tawadu. No. Or some of them, they actually used to put feces on their body thinking this is tawadu and says no. Or they lock themselves in a small cave eating nothing for days uh, saying I am Humble, I don't want any of the worldly, players, uh, worldly pleasures. That is, that is not tawadu. Tawadu is to take the worldly things which you need without going to extreme, but to humble yourself enough that you don't see anyone except that you think he's better than you. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to say, Ibghuni fi du'afa'ikum. Look for me, look for me uh, amongst the weak ones of you. He used to say, look for me amongst the weak ones of you. فَإِنَّمَا تُنْصَرُونَ وَتُسْتَجَابُ دُعَدَعْوَتُكُمْ بِدُعَفَائِكُمْ Because Allah gives you victory and Allah accepts your dua because of the weak ones. And this is what raised the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the hadith of Umar, Man tawadu'a lillahi hakadha The one who humbles himself to Allah like this, Rafa'ahu Allahu hakadha Allah will put him up like that. And he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, وَمَا زَادَ عَبْدًا تَوَادُعًا إِلَّا رِفْعَةً The more you humble yourself, the more Allah honors you. That is why he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the most honorable of all human beings. Why? Because he was the most humble. Because he was the most humble of all of them. Anas ibn Malik, radiallahu anhu, he says, كانت في مدينة جارية There used to be a young girl. When she used to see the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, أخذت بيده وأخذته كيف ما شئت كيف ما شاءت عفوا when, he, when she used to see the Prophet وسلم, she would take his hand and she would take him wherever she wants to go. A child, young child. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, he says, when he used to pass by the young children playing, he used to give them salam. This is Anas ibn Malik. He used to give the young children salam. And he used to say, Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hakam. This is what the Prophet وسلم, used to do. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Laysa minna man lam yarham saghirana wa la yuqir kabirana. He is not amongst us Muslims. The one who does not show mercy to the young ones and he does not have respect for the older ones. Young and old, you are supposed to humble yourself to them. The Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He 
he used to sit with his companions, right or wrong. All of us know that, right or wrong. He used to sit. Abu Dhar and Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhuma, qala, they said, Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yajlisu bina dhuhri ashabihi. He used to sit with his companions. Fayaji'u al-gharib. And someone who's a stranger will come. He's not from Medina. He would come. فَلَا يَدْرِي أَيُّهُمْ هُوَ حَتَّى يَسْأَلْ He will not know who is the Prophet. He will not know. He doesn't have special clothes to show off. He is not sitting on some kind of ceiling to show off. He is just like them. He will not know unless you ask who is the Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is how humble he used to be. That is how humble he used to be. I want everyone to look into his heart because this is one of the things, the great actions of the heart, the wadu, if you have it. And if you don't have it, if you're suffering from kibr, then everyone should look into his heart and start to treat his heart. Because the danger of kibr, the Prophet ﷺ said, what? Man kana fi qalbihi mithqala, dharratin min kibrin la yadkhulul jannah ay hatta ya'adhibuhu Allah, ya'adhibuhu Allah liyadam illa. The one who has the atom's weight of kibr in his heart, the smallest amount of kibr in your heart, you won't enter Jannah till Allah punishes you first. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Ala ukhbirukum bi ahli nar." Should I not inform you of the people of the hellfire? He said, "Kullu uttulin jawadin mustakbir." It's every tyrant, hard-hearted. Proud, arrogant one. Wala ala ukhbirukum bi ahl al jannah. Should I not inform you of the people of Jannah? He said, "Kullu dhaif and mustadhaf." It is every weak one who people look at him as his weak. He used to be humble, really humble. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And one time, one of the Sahaba he came to him. And he started to praise him. He used to say, he started to say, Ya Muhammad, anta Sayyiduna, wa abnu Sayyidina, wa khayruna, wa abnu khayrina. He said, Oh Muhammad, you are our master. And he is our master. And you are the son of our master. And you are the best amongst us, the son of the best. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ya ayyuhal nas, O oh people, alaykum bi taqwaakum. Be conscious of Allah. الشيطان, do not let the shaitan take you places you're not supposed to go, even with your words. I am just Muhammad, the son of Abdullah. أنا Abdullah I am the messenger of Allah and his servant. ما أحب أن ترفعوني فوق منزلة التي أنزلنيها الله. I do not love that you bring me up. Above a place where Allah has given me. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If he could say this, who are, who are you and I? This is what he says. And these are truthful words. Like we said, he is our master, the best of us. But he says, don't let the shaitan deceive you. Because he loved to be humble. He loved to be humble. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, from his humbleness, he's the greatest human being. But he used to ask about his companions. Most of us, we want people to call us. We want people to come visit us. In fact, we want people to give us salam. We will not give anyone salam because we see I'm better than him. Why should I visit him? Huh? The Prophet ﷺ was the opposite. He used to look out for them as we say today. He used to care about them. Even some of those we don't even know. We don't even know. Who knows Thabit ibn Qais al-Shammas? Thabit ibn Qais al-Shammas. Who knows about him? If you know about him, raise up your hand. We have over a hundred people here. Only one knows. 
which is also sad. Thabit ibn Qais al-Shammas radiyallahu anhu is one of the few sahabas who have been granted paradise before they died. Memorize that name. Thabit ibn Qais al-Shammas. One of the sahabas who are given news of paradise while they are still alive. Thabit, he used to be the spokesperson of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. You have to know him. The spokesperson. He used to have a loud, manly voice. So when the kuffar, they'll bring their poets to speak about their deen and whatever, to attack the Muslims, the Prophet ﷺ will bring who? Hassan ibn Thabit and Abdullah ibn Rawaha. Ridwanullah Ali. When they would bring their spokespeople to speak, the Prophet ﷺ will bring Thabit. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he revealed the verse, and since we are talking about the greatest of this man, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when Allah said, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu la tuqaddimu bayna yadi illahi wa rasooli wa attaqullah, inna Allah, huh? inna Allah khabiru ma ta'amalun, inna Allah sami'un basir, right or wrong? Hujurat. And then Allah says what? Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu la tarfa'u aswatakum fawqa sawti al-nabi wa la tajharu lahu bil qawli ka jahri ba'dikum li ba'din an tahbatu a'amalukum antum la tashurun O you who believe do not raise your voices above the voice of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and do not speak loud in front of him because if you do that Allah will render invalid all of your previous good deeds and you'll end up being a loser when this verse was revealed, look how the Quran used to affect the Sahaba. Thabit ibn Qais, radiallahu anhu, he locked himself in the house. He locked himself in the house. He said, this verse was revealed because of me. Because I'm the one whose voice is above the voice of the Prophet. I'm the one with a loud voice. My deeds have been rendered invalid. I'm going to Jahannam. And his neighbor used to be Sa'ad, if I'm not wrong. Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh, if I'm not wrong. After a few days, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa asked Sa'ad, did you hear about Thabit? Where is Thabit? And this is the point we want here. Like we just pointed out here, none of us knew Sa'ad here. Most of us are fun. We didn't know Sa'ad, right? We don't know Thabit, right or wrong? We don't know him. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is asking Sa'ad, what happened to Thabit? I haven't seen him. That is the humbleness the Muslim should have to his brother and the love he should have for his brother. Humbleness brings love. We have to know that. There can never be love without humbleness. We are fooling ourselves when we say that. The ummah, the ummah has to join. Wallahi, we cannot be a true ummah unless we are humble. When you are humble, then you love him just like you love yourself or even more. But if you look down on him, how can you love him like yourself? Right or wrong? Think about it. If you look down on him, you think, no, I'm better than him. You think you love him more than yourself? Answer is no. So Sa'ad said, Ya Rasulullah, I didn't hear from him, but I'll ask. I will ask. The Prophet said, Ashtaka, did he complain he's sick? He said, I didn't hear. Sa'ad went, he knocked on his door. Thabit, he refused to open the door. He said, Malak ya Thabit, what is wrong? He said that ayah was revealed and that ayah is only talking about me because all of you know that I'm the one who speaks loud to the Prophet I have been doomed. I have been doomed. So Sa'adi went back to the Prophet and he said, Ya Rasulullah, this is what Thabit said. He said He's, this ayah was revealed because of him and he's going to the hellfire. But the Prophet he said, La. بَلْ هُوَ فِي الْجَنَّةِ Rather, go back and tell him to come to me. He is a man of Jannah. The humbleness of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The humbleness of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All of us, we know the hadith when the, the young Jewish boy who used to serve the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right or wrong? The young Jewish boy, not even a Muslim, he used to serve the Prophet and he used to pay him. 
A few days he did not show up. And the Prophet ﷺ had the news this boy is sick. In fact, very sick. What did the Prophet ﷺ say? Most of us today, well, he's a kafir, let him die. Right or wrong? That's the ideology we'll have now. Because we don't know what is the sunnah. Or others will say, ah, he's not Salaf, yeah. we don't visit him. You haven't understood Salafiyyah, you haven't understood the manhaj of the Prophet You haven't understood Islam if that is what you say, you haven't. The Prophet he told his Sahaba, let's go visit this young Jewish boy. Why? He's humble, number one. Number two, it's an opportunity for da'wah. The Muslim, he loves good for everyone, Muslim and non-Muslim. And there's nothing better you can give the non-Muslim than to show him Islam. At least you'll save him, bi'idhnillah, from the hellfire. He went to visit, and he called him to Islam during those last moments. And the young boy is looking at his mother. The mother said what? Ajib al Qasim. Respond to the Prophet Sallallahu And he gave the shahada and he died right away. How more beautiful can it be than that? And the Prophet Sallallahu said what? Alhamdulillah alladhi hadahu anqadahu min al-nar Alhamdulillah we thank Allah and praise him the one who saved him from the hellfire through me. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the one who taught us humbleness. Do you know the rights of a Muslim over another Muslim? All of those are about humbleness, if you didn't know. The six rights of a Muslim over another Muslim is all about humbleness. Let's prove it. What is number one from the rights of a Muslim to another Muslim? When he gives you salam, you have to return it. But the Prophet ﷺ, he said what? Who's better? The one who gives salam or the one who, re who, or the one who responds? The one who gives salam first. That's why we discussed Monday the Prophet ﷺ from his noble features. Whoever he met, he would give him salam first. That shows what? It shows someone is humble. Because only those people are arrogant. They see themselves they are better. They say, no, he should give me salam. Right or wrong? Number two, from the rights of a Muslim and another Muslim. When he becomes sick, you go visit him. It's a right he has. Right he has. Humbleness. Number three, what? If he passes away, you go and bury him. We follow his janazah. Number four. Tashmeetul Atis. If he sneezes and says, Alhamdulillah, you say, Arhamkallah, you make dua for him. You can only make dua for those you love. And only if you're humble, you make dua for others. You have to know, arrogance, it goes with what? Selfishness. Right or wrong? Yes. And humbleness, it goes with what? Love. Number five, from the rights of a Muslim to another Muslim. Istijabu da'wa or ijabatu da'wa. If he invites you, you have to go. You know what the Prophet used to say? He used to say, Law du'itu ila kira'in, or law uhudia ilayya kira'in, la ajabtu, or la kabilt. If someone brought me a gift, which is a kira', you know what a kira' is? The foot of a, of, of a, of a sheep or a goat. You call it the hoof. In English. He said, if someone gave that to me as a gift, I would accept it. If someone invited me to his house and that's what we are eating, I will go. That is true humbleness. Today, as I was discussing with some of the brothers here, there's some people who, they put themselves as people of da'wah, teaching people the sunnah. They say, ah, if you want to invite me, it has to be first class ticket. It has to be at least four star hotel. And you have to give me for every lecture a thousand dollars? What he'll say, I'm Sunni, I'm Ahl al Hadith, I am the Sal I'm from the Salaf, you are not. The Salaf, they were practical. They followed their Prophet, وسلم, practical. They practiced it, they didn't just call it. 
And number six is what? From the rights of a Muslim to another Muslim. When he asks you for advice, that you give him sincere advice. All of that is based on what, like we said? Humbleness. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There's so many hadith where they used to invite him to their home and he used to go. He used to go. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from his humbleness, it is portrayed in that hadith, great hadith, when he said, Atani Malakan, there's an angel who came to me. There's an angel who came to me. And he said to me, Ya Muhammad, Inna Rabbak, your Lord, he's giving you a choice. Imma Nabiyan, uh, Imma Nabiyan Malikan, or Rasulan Abdan. Your Lord is giving you a choice. If you want right now, you'll be a prophet who is a king. Allah will give you kingship. Or you'll be a prophet, but you'll be a normal person, a servant to Allah. He said, for another to la Jibril, and I looked at Jibril. This was not Jibril, this was another angel sent for this mission. Sent for this mission. He says, for another to la Jibril, I looked at Jibril. For Ashara Ilya Bithani. And Jibril pointed to me, choose the second one. Fakult and I said, Bal Nabiyan or Rasulan Abdan, I'm going to be a prophet, a slave of Allah. And that is why Allah made him the best. He humbled himself, Allah raised him up and up. Wa rafa'ana laka dhikrak. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to serve his companions, he used to serve them. In the long hadith reported by Imam Muslim, uh, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know the, the hadith when they missed Fajr, when they slept and they missed Fajr. When they woke up, he is the one who called for the vessel of water. And he poured the water, and Abu Qatada was the one giving people the water. The Prophet was pouring. He used to serve them, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You tell me, where will you find a president of a country doing that? It's the greatest man ever to live. And after he finished all of them, Abu Qatar, they said, Ya Rasulullah, okay, let me pour for you. He said, no. Saqi al-Qawm, akhiruhum shurba. The one who serves the people should be the last one. That is from the Sunnah. If you remember, we discussed here manners of drinking. If you remember that a month or two ago. If you serve the people, you are the last one. From humbleness and modesty. Loving for others to love for yourself. Humbleness goes with what? Love. And I mentioned a hadith yesterday when the Prophet he said what? وَلِأَنْ أَمْشِي مَعَا أَخِي لِأَقْبِيَ حَاجَتَهُ that I walk with my brother to fulfill his need. To fulfill his need, something he wants to do. He wants to go grocery. So I say, okay, let's go, I'll take you there. For him, I have nothing. I'm just helping him through humbleness and love. He says, that is more loved to me than to have i'tikaf in my masjid in Medina a whole month. Humbleness. That is what we're missing as Muslims today. And that is the essence of growing. From his humbleness, the Prophet ﷺ in his own house, uh, Al-Aswad, this is in Sahih al-Bukhari, he came and asked Aisha radiallahu anha wa madha. He says, ma kana al-Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yasna'u fi baytihi. What did the Prophet ﷺ do in his house? What did you, how was he in the home? We see him, we, the Sahaba saw him outside in the house. And she said, and she said, radiallahu anha, this is for every husband to listen to, including myself. I'm talking to myself first. She said, radiallahu anha, kana yakunu fi mihnati ahlihi. 
He used to help his wife, his wives at home. He used to help out in the house. Meaning he wasn't that picture of people we have today. He's the king so he just sits and people serve him. No. He used to help. He used to help. Be helpful. That's the point. He shows his humbleness. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from his humbleness he used to ride on a donkey also. He used to ride on a bighal which is a mule which at times used to be looked down on. You know a mule, a mule is the one between, it's a crossbreed of a horse and a, and a donkey. He used to ride on that. He used to ride on a donkey. Not just riding on a donkey and he would put his sahaba to ride with him. Humble. It's not a big deal. There's more things to worry about than the cloth you wear. Oh my jacket is more expensive than his. Or my house, I pay more rent than his. I have this view. I have these better shoes. I, Akhi, those are things which are only taking you away from the purpose. The purpose is for you, your relation with Allah. That is what you should be worrying about. And that is what I talked about yesterday here also. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu said what? Inna al-badhadhata min al-iman. Being rough sometimes is part of iman. You don't have to be clean, uh, uh, speak, speak clean as they say, every day you're all done up. No. Because that leads to what? Arrogance. Sometimes you are the sun thob three days. It doesn't matter. It doesn't look dirty, dirty. It goes. You don't have to comb your hair every day. And No. There's greater things to worry about. And that is the connection with Allah. That is the point. When Umar radiallahu anhu he came and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he was sleeping. When he got up, look at the respect he had for his sahaba. When they come visit, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam would get up and sit. Sometimes he would sleep. When he got up and Umar he saw the what? The marks. The marks on his body. That was what he was sleeping on the mat, which was that rough. Umar started to cry. He cried, Umar, radiallahu anhu. And he looked around. He said, I only saw a water screen and a few pieces of bread and that's it. I said, Ya Rasulullah. Kisra and Qaisar, they are living in their castles, in their palaces. And you are the best of Allah's creation. Yet you're like this. And the Prophet said, Ha ya Umar. Aren't you pleased that they will have the dunya, we have the akhirah. There's more important things to worry about than that. That is the humbleness he had, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we can speak a lot about him. But the point to Ikhwan, he was practical. He didn't just say words. And his Sahaba after him, Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali, they were practical. They were practical. That is why Allah raised them up. Allah raised them up because they were humble. Humble to what? Number one, the truth. Following the truth. And number two, humble to people also. Look at Umar. Umar, radiallahu anhu. Umar stands on the mimbar and he talks about the, the dowry. He says, why do you make your dowry very expensive? You should not give more than this much. And the woman, she stands up. He says, ya amir al Mu'minin, you cannot prevent something which Allah himself did not make a cap of. Allah did not cap it at this much. You can't. And he says what? The woman is true. Umar is wrong. Front of everyone. Umar used to eat bread and olive oil only because he wants to share enough with other people. People are suffering, I should eat the same also. Uthman, talk about him. How much he used to give. Ali radiallahu anhu. This is something we need to bring into our lives practically, ya ikhwan. Practically. And it starts, like I said, everyone looking at his own heart. 
because you are the only one who knows yourself. From the practical ways, from the practical ways of softening your heart and cleaning that disease, number one, you have to make a lot of dua to Allah. Ask Allah, ask Allah to make you someone who's mutawabi', someone who's humble, someone who loves good for others. Number two, sit with people who are like that. Because if you sit with those who are proud and arrogant, you'll be like them. I always say this. You will be like them. Ah, they will always corrupt you. Because if you are not affecting them, they are affecting you. And there's no other way other than that. Either you are affecting them or they are affecting you. If there are people who are just bragging about what they have, you need to lose those people. You need to lose those people. Number three, we have to read about the Prophet Sallallahu and the seer of the, of the Salaf, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, the Sahab, how they lived. How they lived. And if you give examples, we require days and days and days, Allah. But this is something that has to come practically into our lives. Practically. We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to make us from those who humble ourselves to him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to raise us up because the one whom Allah raises up, nobody can bring him down. And the one whom Allah humiliates, no one can bring him up. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika shadun la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka tibulayh.